Welcome back to a very special edition of Components Breakdown. Today we're going to look at the 2010 Essen release game, Sid Meier's Civilization the Board Game. We're going to do something that I traditionally do not attempt doing, and that is breaking up a video into two parts. The reason for this is that Sid Meier's Civilization the Board Game is a very robust and extensive experience. It is a two to four player game that lasts about three to four hours. It's something that I cannot in any way attempt to show everybody the complexity of it in a mere 15 minutes. So the first part of the video we're going to spend looking at the components, explaining them in a little bit more detail, and then the second part we're going to dig right into the gameplay and explain one typical turn for a player. So. In Civilization, each of the players is going to represent one of the numerous nations in the game. They will be doing a multiple different things with their culture, their politics, and even combat and warfare, trying to get to one of four different end-game conditions. The game can end with four different victory conditions, being cultural win, political win, an economic win, and a combat or warfare win. So let's go ahead and open up the box and take a look inside. We're going to try to go through this section as quickly as possible. A lot of people are so interested in how I store my components, so we'll walk through that as well as everything that I have in the box. The game ships with a cardboard insert that is simply used to pack all the materials in. It's highly unfunctional though for actually any kind of storage media for the game. The game has a lot of components, so you're going to have to come up with something a little bit better than that. There is a 32 page full color rule book inside, very well explained. FFG continues to get better and better with their written rules as well as their explanations. I read through this once, I had no trouble whatsoever. There is a market board that houses several different things such as the cultural track, buildings, wonders, and all of your military units on one side. There are several different nationality placards that you have in front of you, one for each player, that have dials on them and special abilities as well as government and starting text. There are crib sheets that have production cost on one side and a summary of the turn order on the other side. Very well done, very useful for new players and experienced players both. There are combat tokens or combat markers will allow you to figure out what scores will be after battles. And there are several different combat units in the game. Four different types, but each of them have different numeric values on them. There are map tiles, which come in two different types. There are home map tiles with a designated leader on the back. And then there are neutral tiles, which do not have any kind of leader on the back side. I've used three Plano boxes to store all my components. The first one houses all of the buildings in the game, as well as the, uh, na the wonders. There is another Plano box that I have combat markers, resource tokens, huts, villages, gold coins, great people, and culture tiles. And there is a third one that houses all the color coordinated stuff for each of the players, as well as the Russian marker and the culture markers. The last thing is I have two baggies for cards. Cards range everything from tech cards to culture cards to wonders cards and uh, government cards. There's a whole lot of them here and I've stored them the best way I could. So that is what is inside the box. Let's go ahead and go right into the components. As you can see there's quite a few components in the game so we're gonna jump right in and start explaining these in a little more detail so that when I get into part two of the video the gameplay section will be a lot more intuitive for those who have watched this section of the components breakdown. Now, the very first thing that you're going to see in front of you are the map tiles. There's two different kinds of map tiles. There are neutral map tiles and there are home map tiles. I have turned over all the home map tiles minus one in the corner simply so you can see what a home tile looks like on the back side. Very easy to denote from the neutral tiles. On the tiles, they're going to be separated into a couple different things. Each of them is broken down into a 4x4 four four grid as you see there, with which you'll be moving your army and placing your scout units. Now, each of these are representing one different kind of five kinds of terrains. There's water, there are forests, grasslands, deserts, and mountains. And each of these different regions may or may not produce a particular good. Looking at this particular home map, you have trade on some of these tiles, you have um, some wheat on this one, you have some iron there, um, 
some silk over here and this one actually has a natural wonder which is this tile the reason why it's a natural wonder is it produces something and also culture very hard to find on the board there are other map tiles neutral ones this one I've turned up simply to show you what other things may be on there sometimes you'll have huts which are very peaceful villages when you go to these areas you simply get whatever they have there and then there are villages which are um, you're gonna have to initiate combat and win combat in order to get whatever bonus that they may provide now the best way to explain all the components is to simply look at one player starting um, components in front of them. Everybody starts with the exact same thing, so no one really has any kind of bonuses at the start of the game. They're going to start with six armies, which are not units. Armies move around the board and denote areas that you go to. However, they are not actual things that fight. They simply denote an area of which you control. There are scouts, which also do the same thing. Each player is going to start with three cities, two of which they can use right at the start. The third one they cannot use until they have researched it in a tech card. The cities look like this. There's two regular cities and a capital city. They each have defense bonuses, so six for the cities, 12 for the capital. When you happen to research walls, you can turn them over and get four more to their bonuses and four more to the capital. Each player is going to start with the same tech cards and they range from tech 1, that you see here on the bottom, up to tech 4. All the same cards, however you research your tech is completely up to you. The pyramid that you build is going to be different from everyone else. It really depends on how you're pursuing the game, if you're going for culture or military, um, or any of those other kind of victory conditions. Each player is going to start off with 8 total government cards. They're double sided, depicting on which kind of government you wish to use. Very civilization like. The government that you choose to use is simply placed on top. There is a starting setup card for each of the players showing you how you set up the game as well as denoting a lot of really good characteristics that you're going to have to know. There is how much it costs to buy infantry, artillery, mounted, as well as army units and scout units. It also gives you your maximum limits on specific things. So to travel with any of your armies or scouts you can only do it two spaces. Your cultural hand size or how many culture cards you can have in your hand is two. Your stacking limit, or how many of these particular things you can have in one area, is two. And the maximum number of cities, as I previously mentioned, is two. Now, all these things will go up and down as you progress in your tech tree. Your hand, culture, your hand size will vary. Your stacking limit will vary, depending upon how you research. Each player is going to start off with one of these different nationalities. In the upper left-hand corner is going to be a trait that is specific only to that particular nationality. There is a government that they will be starting with, so for instance China is starting with despotism. And there is a starting tech card that each player will start with. Usually it's level 1, some of them start with a level 2 tech. In the middle of it is a dial that spins. The outside ring represents your trade, how much trade you have, and the inner ring represents how much coin you have, going up to 15. The second thing we really need to talk about in great detail is the market board. It's broken into four different regions. It looks very intimidating. It's not. There is a unit region over here for all the army units. There is a building region for all the buildings in the game. There are natural wonders and then there is a cultural track on the bottom. We're going to start with the units. Zoom in here. There are four different kinds of units in the game. There is infantry, there is artillery, there is mounted, and there is aircraft. Each of these stacks has a stack of square cards that you see here, and they represent different things. So I've broken some out here just so you can see. On each of these is a different value depending upon how high you've researched that tech. There is level 1, there is level 2, there is level 3, and then there is level 4, each with a different kind of combat value, so 1 up to 4. Each of these cards also has something that it trumps, so this trumps artillery. Mounted Trump's artillery, and then we'll get into that once we get into combat values. Now the cool thing about it is that in this stack we're going to get different values. So for this card, a level 1 horseman is just worth 1. However, this level 1 horseman is worth 2, and this one is worth 3. So you're never going to really know, because these are kept face down in front of your opponent, what level stuff they may have in front of them. Again, all of these are placed face down on the particular area on the board. Also underneath of each of these areas, you're going to have markers. Now these aren't placed on the map board, they're simply placed here as a guide on which level tech certain people have researched. At the start of the game, every player has researched level 1 tech of all these things minus aircraft. As they progress in the game, they simply flip over their token and show that they have researched a higher tech. 
however much it costs for those techs is shown here. To produce a level 1 infantry costs you 5 production, a level 4 costs you 11. Very intuitive, very, very, very easy to understand. Aircraft's the only different one in the fact that once you research it, you just flip it over. But at the start of the game, no one has researched aircraft. The next thing to know is the buildings. There are several different kinds of buildings in the game. Where you're allowed to build buildings is shown on the side here. So the market can be built in any terrain except water. This granary can be built in grasslands only. And looking down here at the trading post and desert only. Now a couple different things you need to know. Most of these buildings you cannot build unless you've researched the technology in order to build them. However much it costs to build them is below them. So five for the granary and seven for the barracks. Some of these have a star in the upper right hand corner denoting that you can only have one of these star buildings in your city outskirts. So you can only have one granary in your city or one barracks in your city outskirts. You can't have any other things with stars once you have a star somewhere. And then there are ones that are upgrades. As you see here, there's an arrow next to the academy. If you have the barracks and you've researched the technology, you can flip it over and turn it to an academy when you've researched it. Very, very, very intuitive once again. It looks intimidating, it's not. The next thing are the wonders, which are faced right through here. There's four wonders in each of the three different ages, which are ancient wonders, medieval wonders, and modern wonders. They come in cards and in tokens. When you research them, they have a cost on the bottom. So the Stonehenge costs you 10, and the Oracle costs you 15. And they also give you a bonus. For instance, this one at the start of your turn, you gain three trade if you own this. You take the card and you place this token somewhere on the board around your city outskirts when you build it. These will slide down as the game progresses, giving you more abilities to research medieval and then finally modern. The, bat the bottom thing on here is the culture track. It's another way to win the game. Now, the culture track goes from here and ends here at the end, which is a victory condition. Each player has a culture token, which represents their face, and as they move in the game, they'll be moving across these, spinning particular things in order to get them, like three culture in order to move. When they move to one of these tokens, they get to draw a card. So each one they move, they get to draw one from that particular deck. When they get to one of these, they get to draw a great person. Now, looking at the culture cards, I've taken two out to simply show you what they look like. Some of them have effects at the start of your turn, and some of them have effects at particular phases. For instance, this one has a phase at the, or has an effect at the city management phase. The other thing that I want to talk about are the great people. Great people are usually coming to play through the culture track. There are six different kinds. There's artists, builders, generals, humanitarians industrialists and scientists, and they all give you different benefits of having those people. The last thing in the game are resource tokens. There's four different kinds of resources. There's wheat, incense, silk, and iron. There are huts, which have a backside to them. Once you actually go into that peaceful civilization, you'll be able to gain whatever this has on the backside. It's a one-time shot use. Villages work in the same way, however, you will have to initiate combat with them and win in order to get whatever they have. Usually what they have is better than what is available through the huts. There are coins that can be gathered through a couple different ways, through culture cards, through tech cards, and even through spots on the, on the map. These will be used as a victory condition as well. There are culture tokens, which you'll be able to use to buy new culture and move your culture along the track. And the last thing here are wounds. Wounds will be going on to your combat units when you actually have combat with another player or a barbaric um, village tribe. So those are all the components. Hopefully that this explanation will give everybody a better understanding of what's involved in the game. Let's set everything up for a four-player game and walk right into the gameplay.